You've definitely heard of James Cameron's Avatar movie. However, few are aware of some behind-the-scenes secrets and even plot-related facts about this series. In fact, did you know that the film was supposed to be released many years prior to its actual release? Well, let's uncover these and other jaw-dropping facts about the Avatar movie. So let's get started. Avatar is a science fiction epic that unfolds on a planet called Pandora, where humans attempt to plunder natural resources and face opposition from the natives. The movie was a hit with audiences and critics alike, being the first to break the $2 billion mark at the box office. But did you know that the sounds of Pandora's beasts were recycled from the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? You don't even have to listen carefully to notice the familiar sounds that were repurposed in Pandora. Remember Sam Worthington? Well, he was living in his car when he auditioned for Avatar. Director Cameron Diaz initially offered the role of Sully to Matt Damon, but he had to decline due to his commitments with the Bourne series. Cameron then had an innovative idea. Choose an unknown actor for the lead role. By this time, Sam was already a well-established actor in his native Australia, with appearances on TV and even in a low-budget horror film where he faced off against crocodiles on the big screen. However, despite his experience, his life was far from the luxury of Hollywood. He was living in his car, a symbol of his relentless pursuit for an opportunity in the film industry. After a grueling six months, the phone finally rang. It was confirmation that he had secured the role in Avatar. That was Cameron's decision to give a less well-known actor a chance that paid off. Not only did Sam shine in Avatar, but he also won over the director, who helped him land a lead role in another classic, the former Terminator. Now I'm gonna tell you something peculiar that happened behind the scenes of the movie. Cameron said he would pin cell phones to the wall if they went off during filming. Believe it or not, this was the way he found to ensure the concentration and professionalism of the actors and the technical crew. He did not tolerate interruptions or distractions caused by electronic devices, which he considered a lack of respect for his work. But did he really use a nail gun to fix his cell phones to the wall? Or was it just a way to intimidate and scare those involved in the production? According to actor Sam Ordington, who played the protagonist Jack Sully in Avatar, this was a permanent rule on the set of the film. He said Cameron was very demanding and strict, but also fair and generous. Afterward, he stated that his reputation was enough to keep people from using cell phones on set, as he was known as a perfectionist and relentless director. One intriguing detail in Avatar was created through CGI, the cigarette smoked by Dr. Grace Augustine, played by Sigourney Weaver. During filming, Weaver gave a convincing smoking performance with the smoke being digitally added in post-production. This filmmaking technique demonstrated the crew's commitment to creating an immersed visual experience for the audience. However, the decision to portray one of the major characters as a smoker generated some criticism. Director James Cameron defended this choice, arguing that it was fitting for the character to be initially disappointing and even unpleasant as she was not meant to be an aspirational role model for teenagers. She also stressed that films should mirror reality rather than impose some artificial morality. In addition to breaking records, Avatar was also a favorite for the Oscars, receiving nine Academy Award nominations, including for Best Director and Best Picture. Avatar also won in the categories of Best Visual Effects, Best Cinematography, and Best Art Direction. Another very interesting fact is that the inspiration behind the Navi, the extraordinary alien race in Avatar, didn't come straight from James Cameron's dreams, but rather from a tale of the director's mother. In a casual conversation, she shared a unique dream she had, in which a giant blue woman had a central role. Cameron's creative mind was instantly captivated by this account 
and turned this vision into one of the most iconic parts of the film. Thus were born the Navi, an indigenous people with blue skin who inhabit the planet Pandora. One of the problems that can occur when a movie spends as much time in development as Avatar is that other creators might have similar ideas in the meantime. While work on Cameron's Avatar was underway, Nickelodeon launched the animated series Avatar The Last Airbender in 2005. It quickly became a huge fan favorite. This seeming coincidence didn't stop Cameron or the Century Fox studio from releasing the movie, which they considered distinctive enough not to be confused with the TV show. Perhaps your biggest question about Avatar is why it took so long for the sequel to come out. There's a logical answer to this question. The reason behind this delay is related to the major change of the movie's setting. While the first Avatar was mostly set on dry land, most of Avatar 2 takes place underwater. Underwater filming has difficulties, whether in live action or CGI, and Cameron had to wait until he figured out how to create something that felt as groundbreaking as the original, especially when it came to motion capture and facial performance capture. In an interview with Collider in 2017, James Cameron admitted that whenever water's added to a situation, problems multiply, making production a lot more complex. Therefore, he needed a few years to wait for the advancement in technology and the development of equipment to make true his vision for the sequel. Along with the delay in the sequel, there's another detail you need to know. The script for Avatar was written 15 years prior to its release and the reason is quite fascinating. Director James Cameron conceived the idea for this epic movie in 1994, but back then, there wasn't sufficient technology to turn his vision into a reality. He did an 80-page treatment for the movie, but the projected cost was a staggering $400 million, a tall figure by any standards of that time. It was only in 2001 when Cameron saw the Lord of the Rings trilogy that he was persuaded that making Avatar was feasible. And so, he embarked upon the project which took another seven years to build. The output was a groundbreaking film merging real actors with digital characters. After the huge success of the original film, Avatar sequels were definitely on the agenda. Even so, with James Cameron being as ambitious as he is, that has turned into four sequels. Let's talk about Navi's language. It is used by the humanoids in Avatar. The language was created by a language expert named Paul Freemer. Paul made a completely new language with more than 1,000 words for the inhabitants of the planet Pandora, called Navi. He wanted the language to be different from human languages, but easy for actors to pronounce. The expert taught the actors the language, but he thought he was the only one who really knew how to speak Navi. What did he teach? What did he teach? What did he teach? What did he teach? 